in the video I will make this nice looking battery with the help of 3D printer. Hello everybody! Today I will make a battery housing which you can make in any shape and any size with the help of 3D printer really really easily. This cell uh, already have this 3D printed housing or this 3D printed frame and the plastic which I use is some PLA. The PLA is some thermoplastic and with the help of the heat you can reshape the plastic really really easily. And for this reason I get the idea if I can make some battery housing which I can already integrate some current collectors with the help of the heat. And exactly this I did with this cell. So this cell have this 3D printed frame or housing and on each side I put these current collectors. The current collectors are made from conductive HDPE and when I put the conductive HDPE on the top of PLA and with the help of the heat I get really really nice weld. So you can see that I get really nice bond between the conductive HDPE and PLA plastic. Really nice. But guys, note, if you want to use some PLA plastic for your battery housing, then in this case you need to use some neutral salt electrolyte. Because if you want to use some acid or alkaline based electrolyte, then in this case the acid and the alkaline will damage the PLA really easily and you will get the leakage everywhere. So use neutral salt electrolyte if you use some PLA plastic. But instead of using some PLA plastic, you can also use some different type of plastic, like ABS or some PETG plastic. Here I use this PETG plastic battery frame, which I already weld this conductive HDP on the PETG. And here I also get some really nice weld between the PETG and the conductive HDPE. Here I have some another example of using this PLA printed uh, battery frame. And here I put this conductive HDPE. Really nice. Here I have some different shape, but you get the point. So like I said before, with this method you can make some battery housing in any shape and also any size. And later in the video I will also show you that you can use a little bit different material instead of using this conductive HDPE. To make some basic housing for the battery I will use the Fusion 360. But in your case, you can also use some different type of CAD program, like for example Tinkercad or something similar, will be also really good. But in my case, I will use a Fusion 360. So first, what I will do, I will create a new sketch. And for the start, I will use the square. Uh, the dimensions of this square will be on tone, let's say 42 by 42 millimeters and this will be actually the hole where I will put my active materials and now I also need some frame this I will do with this offset so I select this square and then I will click to this offset and now I will go to minus minus 
17. And that's it. So this will be the hole where I will put my active materials and this will be actually the frame of this housing. Uh, I also don't like these sharp corners. Okay, this will be great. And actually that's it. So only what you need to do is you need to create two squares. One square is this one, which is a little bit smaller and another square will be a little bit more bigger. And now I will finish a sketch. And now I can extrude this so-called frame and now because i will use this graffiti camouflage uh, for the active material uh, which have the thickness of three millimeters and um, i will use the graffiti camouflage on the positive and also on the negative side of the cell for this reason the thickness of my frame will be around six millimeters oops six millimeters and let's say 6.2 millimeters this will be great because uh, i have two sheets of graffiti camo felt of the thickness of three millimeters and i also need some separator and so on so 6.2 millimeters of this frame I mean the thickness of this frame will be really great and now I can export to create some STL file and then I can print this frame And here I have my 3D printed housing for this cell. And here I have also the other materials which I need to make this battery. Two pieces of conductive HDP, which will be uh, the current collectors. Two pieces of graffiti camo felts. One will be on the positive side, the other will be on the negative side of the battery. And these two graffiti camo felts will be separated by this filter paper separator and for the last the electrolyte which i will use in this battery will be one mole of manganese sulfate and one mole of sodium sulfate and now let's make this battery so first of all on this uh, housing i will put the first current collector Like so. And this one is some baking paper. This baking paper I will use because I don't want that this conductive HDP will stuck to my iron, which I already did. So here I accidentally uh, put some conductive HDP directly on this iron. And now you just slightly push on this housing. Also make sure that you will weld the edges like so. Because then you will get really nice uh, weld 
between the conductive HDP and the PLA plastic. Very nice. Into this area, I will fill with the common felts and the separator. But before I will put this common felt inside of this area, I will soak the common felt with this electrolyte. And now for the last, I will put the another conductive HDP. Now what I need to do is to charge the cell. But because uh, the conductive HDP don't have really nice conductivity, for this reason I need to support the conductive HDP with a little bit better current collector. And for this reason, in my case, I will support the conductive HDP with some copper. So I will place the copper for on each side, like so. And for the last, I will also show you what you can use instead of this conductive HDPE. So here I have this PLA printed uh, frame. And here I have some ordinary kitchen aluminium foil. So instead of this HDPE, I will put this kitchen foil on the top of this PLA printed frame. So when you use some aluminium, then in this case you can push the iron a little bit harder, but not for longer time. Just quick push like so and that's it several times and this will be enough and after cooling down you will get something like this After 15 minutes of charging on 2.1 volts, I disconnect this cell and here I have this LED and the cell don't have any problem to light up this LED. So here I connect this LED uh, to the copper current collectors, but if I connect the LED directly on this conductive HDP, I will get something like this. Here I get a decrease of the power. That's why it's really important that you support the conductive HDP with something which have a little bit better conductivity. So, a cell which uses this 3D printed housing. That's it for now and we see us in the next video. Bye.